Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to answer a question sent in by Ned, and Ned asks the following. How do you keep your confidence up when you seem to be running really bad? Kind of like a hitter in a slump. What are some tips to get out of a poker slump? So Ned, this is a really good question because we're all gonna hit poker slumps at one point or another. And if you are currently in a poker slump as you're watching this, I know it sucks, trust me, but I also assure you it will end at some point, but it's inevitable, right? You play this game long enough, you're going to get into slumps at one point or another. It could be an extended break even stretch, it could be a period of long downswing, but at the end of the day, poker slumps are inevitable, it's baked into the game. So what can we do to work around these darn things since they are going to be happening. So the first tip I can give you when it comes to dealing with a poker slump is to study more. Now this is probably not the answer you were looking for, but I assure you it's incredibly important because think about what happens in a poker slump. Your poker brain, your mental game, tends to erode pretty darn quickly. Tilt starts to set in and you start making weird plays with weird rationale and that's not the way we want to play this game. Tilt is the ugliest four letter word we have in poker and we have to be very, very careful about noticing it and making sure that we don't let it erode our entire strategy overall. And studying is one of the best ways to do that, right? To make sure that you're fixing any holes that may be showing up in your game, or maybe that are responsible for your downswing overall. You have to get into the off-table study in order to work through this, and it's going to help a ton. It's going to build more confidence, which in turn is going to help your mental game. It all starts to work together. So post some hands in the forum. Review some more of your own hands. If you see that, hey, I'm having a lot of tough times in 3-bet pots, then start studying some material on 3-bet pots. And if you're really not sure where to begin, post a few hands in the forum. I'll leave a link down below for a great forum. You can join us over at Red Chip Poker and chat hands with us there. That will be very, very helpful because maybe there's some things you're just not privy to. But people that play this game a lot and really talk about hands a lot will be able to say, hey, this is looking kind of weak in your game. Spend some time working here and this is going to help you a ton. Because the way that I think about it is I have two parts of my brain. I have my emotional side and I have the logical side. And more often than not, when things start going poorly, your emotional side really starts to kick in and takes over and overrides everything. And just in general, most people make most decisions from the emotional part of their brain. Whereas the logic, that's where I want to be. I want to be making logical decisions at all times. I don't want to make decisions out of fear. I don't want to make decisions out of anxiety. I don't want to make decisions out of, oh no, I'm scared of money, right? Again, fear-based. Those are all the emotional side. And when that starts kicking in, it's going to get very, very protective and it's going to do a lot of weird things and make weird adjustments that just are not going to help you at the end of the day. And the only way that I've found to be able to silence this emotional part and really override it is to work on my logic and study my good stuff, study my strategy, so that way the emotional part of my brain can relax. I can say, okay, I trust you. Logical brain, you take over, and your logical brain says, hey, emotional brain, go take a nap. I got this. The only way I've been able to do that is by study. It doesn't just happen overnight. I don't just go to sleep. I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm a logical person now. No right? Because we just make decisions typically from an emotional basis. Override that with logic. Override that with study. So that way in real time, you're making good decisions with good rationale, not emotional decisions out of, well, probably suboptimal rationale. Now, tip number two for beating a poker slump is to avoid getting overly nitty. When you think about how people tend to respond to adversity in their life, it's typically one of two ways, right? It's fight or it's flight. And typically, if you think about the way that would look at a poker table, fight would be, I'm going to get more aggressive, I'm going to start banging more often, and then flighting would be just knitting up and getting really, really tight, really, really protective, and not really getting outside of their comfort zone, saying, well, I've already lost money, don't want to lose any more, and then they just start playing really, really nitty. This is a very common response. Now, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, chances are that's happening to you more often than the other, because if you're playing the fight mode, well, chances are you already busted a bankroll, you probably aren't really caring about this stuff and as such you probably didn't even make it to this video yet alone this far in the video. So if you are getting to the nitty response that is a form of tilt. It is a form of emotional protection and it makes sense right? Your brain says you've already lost money you're losing why don't we just tighten up here why don't we pump the brakes why don't we just get back to basics and really you start injecting a really really boring overly nitty strategy and the question is, how are you going to work through a poker slump by that, right? Chances are you're not. 
but it's a typical response. And what it does is it really botches your strategy. It has you missing situations where you could be producing a win rate and you're very, very reliant on cards and eh, it's just not really something that I want to do. So I'm not saying that when you're in a poker slump, you should just start going crazy lag, but definitely don't go overly nitty, right? Go back to studying, look at good spots, look at situations where you could be interjecting edge and make sure that the spots you are taking are good. Just getting overly nitty saying, I'm just gonna play nut hands is not a strategy. Because if that's what you're doing in this game, sure there are some game dynamics where that could be okay, but more often than not, first and foremost, you're far from your top win rate potential. But then two, as the games get better and better, stronger and stronger, you can't implement that strategy and expect to make any real money in this game. So how are you gonna work through a poker slump if you're implementing a break even at best strategy? That doesn't really work. So get away from this study and again, all that is, getting overly nitty, is an emotional response. Override that emotion with logic, with strategy, with study. That's going to help you work through this thing. Getting overly nitty is not going to get it done. And just along that same line, keep in mind that this is why we have a bankroll, right? So we can weather poker slumps. This is why we don't play poker with three or four buy-ins because we can lose three or four buy-ins in a session, playing very, very well, mind you. So this is why we have to have a bankroll and we have to keep working on our strategy to make sure that we can weather this stuff and we don't fall into these emotional responses like a lot of other players will. And then tip number three is to remember that your previous session does not dictate how your current session is going to go. So your current session doesn't care if you won your last five sessions, if you lost your last 10 sessions, it does not matter. But if you say, hey, I lost my last five, this session is gonna go really poorly too, don't even bother playing. It's gonna be a really bad experience for you. Remember, every single session's new players, new opportunities, totally blank slate. There's no memory about your old stuff unless you bring it to the table. And again, that's just emotional stuff, which you need to override with the logic, which should be overridden with the study that came before it. So that way, when you enter the session, you know what your approach is, you know how to react, you know how to adjust, what's gonna be the most profitable thing to do, not making emotional decisions, rather making decisions that you know are gonna make you money at the end of the day. Now we know we've just kind of scratched the surface of kind of the mental mindset game of poker, but if you're interested in going further down this rabbit hole, I would suggest checking out a course I did with Dr. Trisha Cardner called The Mental Advantage. In this course, we go through everything mental. We talk about solving tilt issues and learning efficiently and increasing your discipline on and off the felt. These skills extend well beyond the poker table, and this is a slam dunk if you are serious about becoming more bulletproof in general, both on and off the table. If you're interested visit splitsuit.com slash mental or I'll leave a link down in the description box. And of course, if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. So Ned, thank you so much for this question. Hopefully this helps. And again, if you are in a poker slump right now, I know it sucks. Trust me. We've all been there and the longer you play, the more of these you're going to have to handle. But if you can work through it, remember, override the emotional with the logical, with the strategy, implement your strategy really well and focus on the things you can control. That's going to be far, far better for you at the end of the day and you will work through your poker slump, I assure you. So again, if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, please make sure to like, sub, hit the bell notification. That way you get a heads up as soon as the next videos are posted. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, good luck out there and happy grinding.